Joe Budden on Kevin Lyles. Kevin Lyles, longtime hip hop uh, figure on um, Boomings labels, management, promotion, everything. He's pretty much done almost every position in hip hop and kind of like the industry side that you can imagine. He was also the CEO of 300 Entertainment, who um, has had some big name, impactful acts through the years, especially like younger artists out there. Um, if you think of Young Thug, Gunna, Shy Glizzy, Famous Dex, like they've had a pretty impressive run of artists. And um, Kevin Laos, he's resigning, which is a kind of a trend these days amongst like hip hop in the industry. There's been a lot of people in executive positions stepping down and walking away from what would people would be considered coveted lucrative positions to be, but they are walking away. And like some people are looking at that as a sign of kind of like the downturn of the industry and the end of things being the way that they are. And Joe Budden kind of talks about that. Let's go. Ty Kevin Lau stepping down to uh, Puff shit. They tried to, mm-hmm. mad people stepped down and lost their jobs and less. And he did that mm-hmm. before that even shit even came out, but. And I, and not to step out on a limb, I just don't believe that they're related. Yeah. I think that Kevin Lau's uh, stepping down or being removed. That has been a theory that's been going around between behind all of these executives and people in these positions stepping down or resigning or because they're trying to distance themselves from Diddy and they know this shit is coming and that is why they are stepping away. Do I think that's true? I don't know. I don't know if that's necessary, but it is a fun little interesting conspiracy theory that's been running wild on the internet moved or have a, whatever happened mm. uh, just speaks more to the music industry shakeup that's going on and the reshuffling of consumption and just all types of other shit. I don't think it's puff related. I would be shocked. I would be shocked. I don't it's think just that, timing. Yeah. The yeah. timing of announcement. It but just a lot of way. people stepping down. A lot of people it's getting fucked up fired. It's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Y'all mm. ain't about to get a whole lot of music from a whole lot of labels. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I think that's bad too, by the way. If I'm Atlantic, if I'm any artist on Atlantic, I ain't putting shit out. That's how I fuck my career up at Def Jam. Taking that, <laughs> taking that same stance. Mm-hmm. See, I'm the opposite. If I'm an artist over there at Atlantic and the big dogs ain't dropping, I'm going to try to put some shit out. I'm going to try to get out there. I think the Nobody only people wants that, to drop? All right, cool. The only people that probably feel comfortable dropping over there are people that have direct relationships with Elliot Grange. Mm. Yeah, maybe true. Oh, yeah. uh, other than that, I you're probably try. not getting your money approved, your budgets approved, your release date approved, your artwork approved. Yeah, but it's I probably going to look like a, a real nasty, a, a real light hearted. I would, be, I would take that as an and take initiative to make me want to. Hey, look, if y'all big dogs don't want to drop, let me get on y'all radar. Y'all want something to drop. Y'all were looking for a reason, so let me go out here on the internet, or let me go start yeah. freestyle, whatever I can do. But you could without do, y'all. But you could do. Yeah, there you go. I'm but saying without. But but now I'm gonna get y'all. To- I don't really see how it's any different than what's going on these days in general. Like it's not like artists are sitting around waiting for labels and A and Rs and people in positions to give them the green light to make music or to put out music or to do what they're doing. Labels are no longer what they used to be. They are not places that break artists anymore. They are places that find popular people or people that have motion and movement and kind of signing them before they get too hot. That's it. They jump on trends. They jump on on what's popular. They follow TikTok. They follow virality and they do that. They are no longer tastemakers. They are no longer the people that are finding these gems and putting them out before people know them. It's the opposite. A lot of these artists are already putting in the work and getting their own following, getting their own buzz, and then signing with labels to hopefully get more money to kind of push their their music and their product even further. So I don't really see a lot of people out there already just sitting around and waiting and like, oh, now this is my time to go. Like, I feel like they've been going and labels have kind of been not doing anything. So say, all right, well, we got some heat right here. Let's go get behind this one since nobody else wants to drop. I don't know. Name two songs of Don Tolliver's last project. Everybody here loved Don Tolliver. Mm-hmm. I love him. Mm-hmm. I went to the release and came back saying some shit in that album. But guess what? If the label ain't there. They the label ain't there. Yeah. yeah. So even so you, you great. Even if you do it. He went and did some artistic, vibey, hot shit. Mm-hmm. You know the kids love him. He sold already. Mm-hmm. So he may not, you may not put him in that uh premiere yeah. A list, say. but it's some niggas with some buzz that I ain't gonna keep now. Nah. And they not getting Y'all go nothing. y'all go sort it out. That's Atlantic. 
That's Warner. Shit, I might feel like that on Universal right now, too. I ain't gonna lie. It's bad. You can't feel good if you're a musician out there. It's bad. It's bad. It's only six of y'all, maybe, that feel good. It's bad. I think the downfall of major labels was inevitable, but yeah. it's not good for music. It shit looks crazy now. It's not good for music. Do, do we do we really? Well, it's not good for music at this level, the major label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Re release. So do you? Because again, I want to say that I don't even know who's independent, who's not no more. Mm. TuneCore used to be independent. I don't know. Mm. All of this is above my pay grade. And all of the fucking legend executives from my time. There are pretty much no truly independent outfits or services or platforms. There's not really that such thing. They just get bought up. They get bought up. They try to keep the appearance of being influenced, but they honestly just get bought up. Bandcamp, who was supposed to be fully independent, got bought up and sold and bought up again. Like there are not true platforms right now that are like truly for independence and for independent artists because it costs a lot of money costs a lot of money to run so like it's not i'm not like saying like going out against these platforms and like saying they sell out it's just i mean it's expensive like sometimes you have to do what you have to do but to look at this and be like i don't know who's, in, who's independent is pretty much nobody i am they have moved them yeah. so yeah. it's a whole new everything going on i don't know but i'm just saying independent music maybe accounts for i think i said it before what three percent of music consumption i forgot what it is but yeah it's not it's not high but it's higher than it's it high, has been it, yeah it's high enough for them to project it in the next 10 years mm -hmm. what if it says seven percent mm -hmm. like when i got to uh spotify during all the podcast shit them niggas was like yo y'all get this podcast shit to two percent we gravy mm -hmm. you get it to five percent Everybody in here, we gone. Mm -hmm. So it don't take much. So I mean, I do think that's great for independent acts. For y'all that have the hopes and dreams of the, the major label system as we knew it, I think it's over. Yeah, yeah. I, agree. I agree. This, with that. this I just looks over. like a like so a I'm, major. I feel like it's again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I feel like the major label system has been over for a long time. Like the whole system used to be that you needed a label to get promotion, to get exposure to kind of even get your name out there, to get on radio, to get plays, to get seen. And that's no longer the case because they do not have a monopoly on the different avenues and ways to be heard these days as a musician. There's YouTube, there's just social media, there's Spotify, there's, you know, you name it. There's an outlet, there's SoundCloud, there's so many outlets to be heard and seen these days by your fans. I mean, there's TikTok, obviously. There's like so many different routes that they do not directly control that their main power and influence and reason why they were so, you know, influential in the industry and music in the first place is gone. They can no longer gatekeep because there's no more gates. There's, well, there's just too many gates. There's too many doorways, there's too many entryways, and they can no longer kind of put their foot behind the door because they only have so many feet. And there's so many doors that, all right, I'll just take the side door. All right, I'll go this route. Like, there's so many artists that they don't see coming and they no longer have the money or power or, or even desire to break an artist that I feel like the system has been dead for a long time. Like I can't name or think of one artist that the label has broken that did not have a following, especially in popular music. They did not have a following before they blew. Perfect example, Chaperone, Sabrina Carpenter, absolutely massive pop stars these days. But why? Because they put the work in. They already had a following. So when their song actually broke through and blew up, it wasn't the label. It was them. And they were already ready. So the idea that the major label is, is dead, I mean, I feel like that's been quite a long time. I think it's been dead since Napster, LimeWire, BearShare. That was the start, and this is just the end. Because outside of money and owning publishing, what do they have? What do they offer outside of money? That's it. Yo, we have money. We'll get we'll help you get on the store. We'll put money into advertisements for you. We'll get you into, you know, good studios. But with the influx of, of like technology, you can get 
the highest quality studio recordings with a laptop these days. So again, they've been dead for a while. Their consolidation play. I think and they've, that's been, what I was and they've been consolidating yeah. in but, front of our faces. Yeah, but like the absorption of like mm -hmm. Atlantic Records underneath the, I guess, universal umbrella. And then what happens? Elliot and Lucian like control most of the business. 50, 30, 50 percent of the fucking 35 percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it, I think it's horrible for music in general, though. I the think music that, business. But I think that. Yeah, because there's the, no. I think gatekeeping is actually kind of good in, to some to some degree. I agree with you. Like without without that, it's just the wild wild west. Everyone's throwing their shit up, and how do we know what is good or what is JV? What is what is? That is an interesting point. Gatekeeping is good to a certain degree. I would have to agree with that. I've been saying that for a while. I do think that is something that is missing amongst, especially like hip hop, um, is some sort of barrier to entry because it's so easy to get your music out there and so easy to make music. There's just so much landfill, so much filler music that has no chance of getting big or no quality or no value to an audiences. And how do you find what's hot? What's next? There's just too much to kind of go through, but there's a uh, plenty of ways for gatekeeping and for tastemakers and for different people to kind of like curate that type of music for you. Blogs have been there for a long time. Obviously, playlists are a big kind of movement for that. So the general idea that you need labels for that, you don't. You don't. Because Spotify has already taken that over. People discover music by two ways nowadays. TikTok. Reels. TikTok Reels shorts, however you want to say it. TikTok and Reels in one. And playlists. Spotify playlists. So that whole kind of aspect of the major labels has already been taken over, has already shifted to Spotify and TikTok in general. But gatekeeping is still a good thing and is, is, and is needed. You do need some curation. Excellent production, excellent music, excellent shit, or what is just some shit. It's hard, it's hard to weed through. As someone who goes and presses play on mad random shit on the fucking new releases, mm -hmm. okay. it'd be a lot of bullshit up there. But, be Mark, a but, lot you, of but you but but you saying how do we know what's good and what's not? Like you there's listen. no bar. There's no bar. There's no bar anymore, is what you're saying. And you are the the unicorn. We are the unicorns that are going to listen. Yeah. We go to listen. Okay, okay. Yeah, but right. but even in that You have to weed through a lot of bullshit to get to the good shit. That's true. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Gatekeeping go, major label systems yeah, like, is good okay. because at least gotcha, yeah, you knew gotcha. there was some brand behind it. I know if it comes out on TDE, if I know it comes out on yeah, whatever I get label. It. Yeah, but that's not going away. Major labels are going away, but independent small artisan, like small record labels are still here. TDE isn't going anywhere. Other labels aren't going anywhere. Like there's a ton of small indie labels that put out super, super dope shit still. And if anything, they even have a much bigger role to play nowadays than they ever did in the past. Because like you said, it's so hard to find what's next, what's hot, because as good as Spotify is at playlisting, they can't go out and find those people. They don't really know to the degree that like people in the industry know, but these record labels do, and they're not going anywhere. Major labels are going somewhere. They're offering something different. This is probably going to be of a certain quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's all if independent, that dope, if that dope got a certain stamp on it, you know what it's hitting on. Yeah, exactly. Like again, like I say with the old Def Jam record label vinyl, that meant something. That's a, that's a stamp. Mm -hmm. This Man, is going to be of a certain quality. Yeah, got it, got it. I got it now. But listen, what y'all thought it was just going to be the artist? To, we've been saying here for years that the artist is getting their money from places other than music. True. Maybe y'all thought it was only the artists. But the see, music I, business has found out we get our money elsewhere. Yeah. But we that's get the our, music business fault. That's the part that trips me up. The artist was forced to go get their money elsewhere because facts. they wasn't getting paid from the music. Thousand. Facts, and they still are to this day because of streaming. Because you get, what, 0. .0003 of a penny for a stream? Like, you're not making any money from streaming. Streaming is just a marketing platform these days. So you have to get your money somewhere else. And that's because that's how the industry has it set up. 
100%. So y'all made them go get money elsewhere, are mad that they're not getting money from music here, and now y'all leave music to go and get the money elsewhere. Or mm-hmm. in this system, the artists have always been designed to get the money from elsewhere. It's never been the case where the music business itself has to get the money from elsewhere. Right, but before the music was, the business right now is, is having a seizure. It's swallowing itself. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with you that mm-hmm. it's their it's their fault. Agreed. Mm-hmm. But all they ever gonna do is observe and react. Rec- and regulate. React. Adapt. Mm-hmm. React. Yeah, the, the music business has always been reactive. I was watching a clip with Gil- Gilbert Arenas. Shout to Gilbert Arenas, NBA Joe Button, um, and he was saying how, damn, who was that? Ron Artest or somebody did. The two headbands, Ben Wallace. Somebody did the two headbands, different color. The NBA Bandit, and then came out with the NBA multicolored Head- headbands. Mm-hmm. Allen Iverson had the sleeve he was wearing. Mm-hmm. They banned it only for the NBA to turn around and then sell the sleeves. Same with the leg strap that Tracy McGrady made, the, the neat, all of that shit. So, I mean, music business is the same shit. All of these people are getting. All pretty much corporations, the same shit. When they get so big, they no longer innovate, they no longer even know. How to innovate. They just know how to throw money at things, which is what I've been saying, which is why indie labels are going to be so much more important than they have ever been before. Because if anybody knows how to innovate, it's going to be them. The next kind of shift and wave and music isn't going to come from a major label. It never has. It's always going to come from the indie. It's always going to call from like those small collectives that are changing things. Always. Always. Think of our future. Think of ASAP. Think of Dungeon Family. Like those small collectives and groups changed the complexion and the direction of music, especially like hip hop at the time. Did the labels know that that's where things were going to be headed? No. But they reacted <laughs> and they're like, give me 14 more of those. You know what I mean? Like that's all they do is react. All they do is react getting their money from tech uh, and IPOs. Mm -hmm. They out of here. They gone. They don't need uh, us to drop anymore like back in the day. Mm -hmm. So now niggas ain't dropping. Yo, I miss the days. You know, we old. So I don't know. But back in the day, albums dropped. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we're excited about that. But show. now the artists have so much money because they're getting money from ancillary places that you can't force them to I think drop. that's cap. Yeah, I think that's cap. cap. That's not all cap. I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying... Most uh, of them. Yeah, true, true, true. Most of true. them. You talking about the six, seven, eight yeah, niggas I'm talking again. about, yeah. yeah. That ain't... But those are the niggas that be keeping the lights on in the building, no? Not anymore, is I just what think, I'm saying. I think it's bad business. I, like, I, niggas is dissing homeboy. Um, Elliot. I think he came in with a business model that all of you high paid niggas, I can't see a value in y'all no more. Y'all got to get the fuck out. That's what happens in corporate. We bleeding money. In corporate, corporate, what happens is the first thing you cut when your company start doing bad Sorry. is expenses. You niggas is getting the fuck out of it. If I can't put a nominal fee on what you bring here outside of your relationships, because that's what everybody got, put a dollar amount on this person's office. And if I can't, you got to go. I'm not going to all the way disagree with you. You get what I'm saying? Yes. From a business perspective. Yes. So I'm not disagreeing <clears throat> with what you're saying. Some of the chatter comes from they would the, the episode of Succession would go different if the head of this company for the last 90 years get to send his, his son to go be the head of that company, true. which is supposed to be our competition. True. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. A lot of chatter is coming from that. I agree with that. That's There's true. There's also a lot of chatter, and we'll say much more, about how Elliot Grange is going about taking the position, hostile takeover. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, I could believe that. It's not. Mm-hmm. Respectful. But you, but, I could believe that. But you hostile to people that have been built, here that for built 30, this place. 40 years. They built years. the building. They, bu- they built this one. All right, so they're kind of getting into the weeds here, talking about Elliot Granger, who is the CEO of um, Atlantic, I believe. And he is basically nepotism at his finest. He is the son of another very powerful music executive and they are pretty much the epitome of everything that artists hate about the industry and executives and it's all about the dollars to them and he is basically the new face and representative of that but they're getting sweets about that but i mean the argument that the music label system major label system is dead is honestly an old argument 
it's been around for a long time. Like they'll never go anywhere completely because they still own all the resources, all the money, all the connections, all the publishing, but their impact and their usefulness to the artists as a whole and people as a whole is basically dead. And it's been dead for a while because when you get so big and you can just throw money at things, you no longer know how to innovate. All you know how to do is own and control. And that's all they're trying to do at this point is own and control and hang on for as long as they can. But the major life system, yeah, that's just been dead for a while. What do you guys think about the current state of the music industry? It's been a very ongoing topic over here and especially with like some of the people that we've interviewed and had on here on the show, because obviously it impacts so much with the things that we all love, which is music. But let me know what you think about that whole situation, the music industry and major labels in general. 